So we're going to start our dash build on Brewpig. We started doing this a wee while ago um, and Tim uh, in a previous episode helped us build our boards uh, for the dash and then also our modular boxes. Um, the issue that we're having is the ply actually started to fall apart. So the boxes were beautiful. They, um, the dash itself though we need to modify. So what we're going to do is use our pre-made uh, Malamine kitchen benches and then we're going to use the old plywood as a template to basically go through and get exactly the right size. Those big benches on the back of the ute, they are going to become our dash. So the modular boxes that Tim built uh, are pretty much finished now, so they're all uh, two packed ready to go. We just have to do a couple of modifications to the join, so when we've got these in permanently, these will be nice and tight, they, they sit perfectly level, and we're just going to seal it up into a very small bead of a sealant just to basically make sure there's no air gaps and so on. Um, what we need to do this morning, this is the old bench, so it's got We've left it outside, it's got rust and all sorts of stuff on it, but we need to just trim, so you can sort of see some lines and things in the corners here. I need to trim those lines off and that's going to become the new uh, bench surface template. So originally this, this board slid underneath these boxes and lifted them up um, half inch. We're going to drop them back down half an inch and then just put the bench sort of butted up against them. Um, the reason being is the bench is 600mm wide. Uh, whereas this is, is slightly wider and we don't have the option to get a wider bench so uh, that's what we have to work with. So my plan was to actually use the old piece of wood as my template um, but so I've chopped it up and I've modified it a wee bit. What, one of the issues I'm finding is because it's so warped, um, it's not accurate and I, can't, I just can't get it to, to be accurate. So what I'm going to do is drop using this. I'm actually going to put the marks straight onto the new bench. So this is a reversible bench. So it's got melamine on both sides, so white on one side and then on the other side you've got black. Um, and the reason we're using this is because it's basically fully sealed. I don't have to buy paint or anything like that. Like I can pretty much put this in and it's ready to go. Oh, not light. <sighs> we have a bench stop. This is the same height as the bench. So I'm trying to lift this box up even so it sits on here nice and square. So what we want to do is bring pilot up here and bust it up against there because I don't want the pilot. This has to stick out further than the pilot. So I want a real super precise line down here. So because it's melamine, I can kind of scratch it. So what I'm doing is putting a steel rule in. I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm just going to do that rather than try and get a pen to work on it properly. So on the end of your skill saw, you've got little notches that basically determine how far away you are from the blade. They're not real precise, but they give you a kind of a guide as to where you're going to end up cutting. Um, one of the best ways of getting a straight line though, is to put a piece of wood where you need it.
So I was cutting it really, really slow then, um, because as the blade goes up, it chips the, the melamine surface. So I wanted to keep it as sort of neat and tidy as I could, really. You basically line it up with the edge of your, your saw, so that as you move along, you press against the wood, but you can't physically go in past the wood, if that makes sense. So it holds it really, really straight. You end up with a really beautiful cut all the way down. So I'm just giving it a tiny bit of space, but I'm kind of using the, the board to support the edge of the melamine, but at the same time I'm also stopping it from stopping my saw from scratching the, the work below it. So I've got to go through and trim this edge. So um, I cut it last time with the skill saw and you can sort of see right down on this edge here, basically leaves a whole bunch of chips and nicks and things like that all the way along that edge. Because this is going to be a visual edge, I just don't want that. So I'm going to hit it with a router. I'll show you how we do that. So I had my little wood router put in a straight blade. You can see these the edges of these blades, get it into the light. You see they're, they're basically straight top to bottom. So what I do is I measure between the, the straight edge on the side here and rotate that blade round so the straight edge on the side there and the and the edge of that blade I get that measurement transfer it across between the line here and the edge of this wood that's my straight edge so I'll slide the side of this along that straight edge and it basically goes through and cuts a, a perfect uh, cut all the way down that straight edge so that was a little trick that um, that Tim showed me to get a really beautiful edge when you don't want to have any of the sort of chipping and stuff going on because instead of the blade on a saw coming up and ripping through it, you've got a circular motion like that cutting, so it doesn't necessarily put any upward pressure on, on the plastic surface. When you first start cutting into this, you want to leave about a millimetre or two before you get to your final cut. That way the last cut can be really beautiful because it's not taking off a huge amount of wood. So this is the edge that I just routed, so if you look along that edge it basically just matches perfectly with the piece of wood. You don't have any of the chip marks that we talked about earlier, um, it's just a really lovely way of joining oh, brittle material. Wonderful, yeah. yes because it was quite um, cut up wasn't it before? Yeah, so this is going to have a like a gauge thing, so, so like you're not going to see this join but it's just nice to be able to get it right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Great, and just, just while we're here, why is there a map of Australia behind you? The navigation system. <laughs> um, might, people might be curious as to why there's a map there. So we are based about here, Bundaberg, um, and the plan is we want to explore that part of Australia, um, and then we're going to head sort of to New Zealand, and we're going to head across uh, the Southern Ocean to Antarctica. So um, the Great Barrier Reef 
goes all the way up the side of Australia here like this, um, and we're going to explore the southern end of the Great Barrier Reef. So uh, when Brookhead gets in the water, that's one of our first trips is going to be to this area of the ocean. Can you point like, to the bottom of the reef and where yeah. we are so people can see the distance? So we're, we're here, at a place called Bundaberg. The bottom of the reef starts around about here, a place called Lady Elliot Island. Yeah, so it's like 40 nautical miles. It's, it's, yeah, it's really close to the coast. Yeah. And the reef itself is huge. The reef, it's, it's the absolute massive area. It comes right out, I think it's about 100 miles or 150 miles, you know, right out to this sort of area here. Um, and it's, it's actually the continental shelf of Australia. And it was only formed about 10,000 years ago, from what I understand, when the sea levels rose. Um, this, this whole area here was out of the water. Um, so kind of the cool thing I think about it is the Aboriginals that were living in Australia at the time would have known Australia to finish out here. And then it was, it's a relatively recent thing, like 10 or 20,000 years, that that sea level has, has risen and pushed it all back inland like this. So there's a little bit of polystyrene sticking out, I had to cut away. It was just stopping the box from going all the way into the wall. Oh, it's still stopping it. I'm coming that way. One of those really hot um, Australian spring days. Yeah, really humid. It must be in the 90s. 30, 32 degrees. Yeah, 90% humidity, maybe. Yeah. Alright, that's in. That's in. What about that little bit that's over the window there? Yeah, that actually needs to be trimmed down. We just oh. don't know what we're doing with that bit yet. Okay. We're going to kind of do that as a last minute thing because then we can decide what's going to look best. So, yeah. so they, like you can see they're fat at that end and they're skinny at that end down there. Just come back a little bit. See the height difference there? Yeah. They basically straighten it all out so they take any curve, any like bumps and knocks and bangs and whatever out that's, and it all ends up being perfectly flat. This is what Tim did? Yep. Yeah. And they're sealed, that's wood that's been, um, has a sealer on it. <clears> so we've used um, epoxy uh, international Evidure on all of our wood. Um, so it seals it up really well. Right, so we have our two panels, they're overlapping at the moment. Once I have that off, I can then draw my line all the way along this piece here, on, on this surface, take this bit downstairs and cut it, and we'll have a nice join that, that joins there. They'll both be pretty much as perfect as I can get them, basically. done some measurements and I don't have enough wood to do this so I have to do a run into town. So this little diagram here is basically the measurement of this area just here that I have to fill up. So these benches are 600 mil um, wide by 2.4 meters so 600 by 240. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a join, where are we? I'm going to put a join across like that. So this bit will be about 300 mil that bit will be 600 mil. That'll be a factory straight, lovely edge. That'll be a factory straight, lo lovely edge. Same with that one there. And then I'm gonna cut this shape into the front. And that, that shape there will allow me to slot it into where, into this position here. So it'll fill up this gap, that gap, and that gap. And there'll be a join that runs basically down there. And that'll become my second board over the back. So, uh, I think I'll do the first board. 
um, I'll ring up and order it, make sure that the other one's sitting there ready for me. I'll make this first one, and then I'll nip in, do a town run, and grab board number two. And that should be enough to get uh, the dash completed today. Okay, so I need to make up a template to deal with this weird shape that I got behind. So the way that I do that is I cut up a whole bunch of strips of plywood as you just saw me do. Um, and then it allows me to put them around the edges and then I just screw them all together and I end up with basically a wooden frame that's exactly the right shape that I need. Um, and then I can just lay that on top of the wood or whatever it is, steel that I'm cutting out. Um, and yeah, it's an incredibly simple way of achieving the shape that I need. So I'll show you how I do it. This is one of the strips that we cut earlier. You put that along, so you've got to make sure everything else is lined up. So all your deck, in this case the, the boxes, uh, the dash, like everything else is sitting exactly where it needs to be. Um, then I can just go through and mark this. It's basically copying the line of the plastic. So take your time. Gotta be right, so it just goes nice and slow. So I'll end up with a few bits of board like this that I cut, and then I come up and sit them overlapping each other, and then I screw them together. Always put two screws in the corners so they're stiff enough, and then a couple of like a couple of beams just screwed across so that it doesn't sort of start twisting and wobbling and so on. And because I don't want this one going anywhere, I'm throwing in a brace. Okay, so our bench is, uh, the second part of our bench is mounted in. So we've done this cut basically that we created. So if you have a look straight down vertical, you can see I've had to sort of notch out the, the plastic so that it, it fits in there nice enough. Um, and then we've also routed this join. So this join is pretty much as close as I'm gonna get two pieces. There's a little bit of misalignment up here. You can sort of see like that, but that actually doesn't matter because this is gonna be covered up. So. Um, there's going to be a very small bead of um, sealant all the way along, um, kind of like what you do in your bathroom or your kitchen. So we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're also going to be doing it along the edge of the windows and so on, um, and then across the joins here. So uh, when we go through and do that side of it, we'll basically clean it up and make everything look beautiful. slaughtered by midges, so we've got to deal with that. Music. 
So, all right, so we got both boards fitted in. This is gonna be the basically the nav table. So this is where we'd lay out a paper chart if we're gonna use paper charts, if we feel like nostalgia. And, but uh, yeah, so basically what we gotta do, the edge doesn't quite line up at the front here and the back's a little bit tight. So I'm gonna join these two boards together now so that I can take any variability like of the layout out. So um, where they join, there's no batten underneath. So the join is over top of the gap. We've done that on purpose. Um, so that we can actually get a strip of aluminium, 50 mil wide aluminium and screw them together on the underside so that uh, it completely makes them flat and beautiful to work with. So this will become one board, just makes it a lot easier to be able to start trimming up the edges and things from this point forward. This is cool. What's your trick? Alright, so there's a cool trick when you're joining two bits of wood like this and you don't want to mark or do any sort of stuff that's going to show up later. I normally uh, do this, so get a bit of masking tape. Just the paper stuff, you don't need anything other than that. Lay it on your edges like so, as close as you can get. And then, line those up, and you know you've got your board in exactly the same spaces and dimension and everything as when you took it out. So always do a couple, three's good. Don't need to do more than that really, but. So this allows you to basically get everything lined up perfect and all that sort of jazz. And then, so let's just make sure they're sitting in the same orientation. Yeah, that's good. So now I can take this, these two boards downstairs, sit them on the bench, and know that I've got them exactly as they'd be sitting up in the wheelhouse here. Right, so what we're doing, this is the underside of the bench, um, and I'm basically going to go through and put screws all the way down this aluminium strap, and then that holds the two surfaces pretty much absolutely perfectly together. So um, they'll get closer and closer, tighter and tighter, and then, yeah, essentially become one. So with those straps basically screwed down tight like that, this join here is basically completely flush. So, which is exactly what we were after. So yeah, all the way around, I'm really, really stoked with that. So you can see the gap between the two, they're pretty much bang on. So what the plan is now uh, is to fill those up with a sealant between them. So a dash fits really great inside the wheelhouse. Um, now we need to go and seal all of the edges. So where we've cut the wood with the router and the saws and so on, um, we need to go through and use a Jotun two pack and basically clean up all of those edges, paint them so that they can't off gas into the interior. So we'll get them out of the wheelhouse and put them out on the back of the boat so that we can start painting. So that's our dash done for now. Um, there's a, a couple of things that we need to do next. So we've got to go around, we're going to glue this down. It's not glued at the moment. This black surface will be glued down to the battens underneath. We need to go around with our sealant all the way around to clean all the edges up, make them look tidy and beautiful. And then we need to build the shroud that goes around our screens here and also the gauge cluster on the right hand side. Um, and then finally, one of the tricky bits, we actually have to figure out how to put insulation throughout all of these boxes. So these are hollow. They need to be packed with as much insulation as we can so that any condensation and things like that is minimized because obviously we've got a lot of electrics around here. So the next step is uh, putting the mullions on. So mullions are basically a wooden shroud that goes over top of the metal frame that sits between the windows. 
there's a gap on, on the boxes. Where, where all of these um, beams come down, we've created a gap in the wooden boxes so that we can feed wiring up. So that allows, when the mullion goes over top, it allows us to run a channel of wire up to the radar mast and back down to our electrics. So one of the things we're always planning to do in Brewpeg is create a centralised place that we can put all of our camera gear, drones, batteries, chargers, all that sort of stuff. Um, and in this area of the wheelhouse, uh, we always had plans to put in basically a big, what we call the camera cupboard or a YouTube box of wonder. Um, and uh, I had an idea floating around in my head of, of what we were hoping to put in here. And I spoke to um, one of our uh, volunteers, Tim, and um, within about 30 minutes he'd pretty much come up with this like phenomenal design of what we're after. It was brilliant. Um, me and Ryan were flushing out ideas early on and then I just kind of gave Tim the brainstorming that me and Ryan had come up with. and, and um, yeah, like typical Tim, like just, you know, nanoseconds later he'd done this like full 3D design of what it was and, and um, he said, you know, is this, is this okay? And I'm like, yeah man, that's awesome. And, um, and about three days later he'd built the whole thing. So, um, it, like just an awesome, awesome amount of work must have gone into this. And like it's, it's beautiful, like the quality of it's amazing. So I just really wanted to say thanks to Tim. Um, uh, and I also managed to get the shroud for the screens built. So. I obviously need to finish it up. Um, we're going to wrap all the edges so that it's nice and tidy. But this will act as um, basically a glare screen um, so that it sort of you know, covers the screens and so on. Um, it doesn't impede our vision, so when you're sitting in the seat, you actually see clean over top of this and you can see the front of the boat really easily. And then on this side here, we're gonna have another face in here that has all of our engine controls, gauges and so on. Um, so it'll be navigation across here and then engine controls in here. And the reason we put this on an angle is so that both the, the helm seat and the navigation seat can see all of the engine control um, systems so that if someone misses it, we might have a backup for somebody else. And in Brewpeg, we have an edit off in the right corner, Ryan Dinnerwald, using a PC and some <laughs> horrific software. <laughs> One man builds doors and seals. <laughs> and, in the, and in the left corner, we have Jess, <laughs> using an apple and software that works. <laughs> Regular feature of our nights on Brookie is um, sitting in front of Jess's little MacBook, looking at song after song after song <laughs> to try and figure out where all the cool songs live. Gonna cry when you're gone